Welcome to the Scratch Attach app demo. This is part two of a two-part series. In this video, we'll cover the more advanced features. If you're watching this, chances are you've already watched part one, the basics, or you skipped it because you're afraid of being basic. Either way, we'll explore live looping, pad effects, platter play, and other performance tools for DJs who like to flex a bit. So let's dive in. Pad functions. Let's break down the pad functions in Scratch Attach. There are five pad modes selected using the five smaller pads above the main trigger pads from left to right. Live looper, loop player, platter play, sample trigger, and pad effects. We'll go out of order, starting with the basics and building toward the more advanced features. Loop player. This mode is used to load and trigger full length audio loops. Press the loop player button, pads turn blue. To load a loop, hold shift and tap a pad. Select the desired loop. To start or stop playback, just tap the pad again. Pads light up white when playing. You can now load entire folders of loops. Press shift plus the blue loop player button. Navigate to your desired folder and tap open in the top right corner. The loops will load in alphabetical order. To assign specific loops to specific pads, simply rename each file with a number at the beginning. Just like the files in this folder, the number determines which pad the loop gets loaded to. Master loop player volume for both sides is controlled by the mic 2 low knob defaulted to 12 o'clock. To adjust the volume for an individual loop press shift and turn the beat knob, this affects the last pad that was pressed whether it is playing or not. While adjusting the pad will blink white to indicate which pad is being adjusted. The touch strip VU will also give you visual feedback for how much the volume has been raised or lowered. Default position is in the center there is a limit to how high you can gain. If you go past, you will see the pad turn yellow. Sample trigger. This mode is for loading and triggering short samples, one shots, or drum hits. Press the sampler button, pads turn red. Hold shift and tap a pad to load a sample. Select the desired sample. Tap the pad again to trigger it. We've added choke groups to the sampler. Just name your files with underscore CH plus a number one through nine. For example, Note 1 underscore CH1 dot wave and note 2 underscore CH1 dot wave will be in the same choke group. When you trigger one, it cuts off the other. Perfect for hi-hats, bass notes, or any layered sounds you want to keep clean. Loading folders to all eight pads is also available by pressing shift plus the red sampler button. Master sample trigger volume for both sides is controlled by the mic 2 high knob, also defaulted to 12 o'clock. To adjust the volume for an individual sample, use the same method as adjusting individual loops by pressing shift plus rotating the beat knob. Pad effects. Pad effects are momentary effects triggered while holding down a pad. These are great for live performance tricks, quick fills, or layering over your main effects. Warning, very fun to use and could be prone to overuse. We've got eight unique pad effects. I'll walk you through each one with a quick example. To get started, press the pad effects button. Vinyl Break Simulates the sound of turning off a turntable. Hold the pad and the track slows to a stop. Release and it snaps back in time. Backspin Hold the backspin button down for a few seconds before it rewinds. Great for transitions or rewind effects during builds. Chop Simply mutes the audio when pressed. Use it manually to chop the sound up. Dub Echo. A strong delay that trails off an ideal for dub style breakdown. It kicks in only while you hold the pad. Fast Flange. Adds a sweeping metallic whooshing sound. Stutter. Retriggers a small slice of audio at rapid intervals. Reminds me of a CD skipping. Pretty fun when combined with scratching. Panner. Moves the sound left and right across the stereo field. Sweep. A wide filtered sweep effect. Try it for builds to add tension. Platter play. Use the pads to play musical notes with a tone record. Press the platter play button. Pads turn multiple colors based on the note. By default, the key is C and the scale is major. You can use the loop and loop out buttons to shift the notes a half octave up or down. To change the key, use the parameter buttons. To change the scale, hold the shift button and use the loop in, loop out buttons. You can also go into the settings menu and select the key and scale at the bottom of the MIDI tab. 
PlatterPlay supports 11 scale types. Keep in mind there are a total of 25 notes and not all of the scales have a full two octaves. For access to all 25 keys, you can use full range mode by pressing the loop on off button. You can move up and down the note range using the loop in and loop out buttons. Pad mode isn't the only way you can use platter play. You can also use a MIDI keyboard and play notes manually. Open the settings menu and go to the MIDI tab. Select your keyboard under secondary MIDI device. This can be saved in the default preset so you don't have to change it every time. Press Shift plus 33 RPM on either deck to activate keyboard mode. The keyboard icon will light up and your MIDI keyboard can now play a full two octaves of notes. We just added a new feature to Platter Play called Release Mode. Press Shift plus the Platter Play button. The button will blink and the audio from the deck will mute. Now when you press a pad, it will change the note plus unmute the deck until the pad is released. This works with a MIDI keyboard as well. More options will be added in the future. Live Looper. There are three Live Looper modes, Standard, Split, and X10. For all modes, there are two types of pads, Master Pads and Follower Pads. The Master Pad is always the leftmost pad and the first one you should use. The rest are designated as Followers. Standard Mode. Press the Live Looper button to enter the mode. The pad colors provide key visual feedback. Magenta equals pre-fader, sampling directly from the deck. Aqua equals post-fader, sampling after the faders. Use the left and right parameter buttons to toggle between pre-fader and post-fader input. Yellow equals armed and ready to record. Red equals actively recording. Green equals loop currently playing. Layering loops. The first pad you arm becomes the master loop. Press to arm. Press again to record and then again to stop. The master pad will instantly start looping. Arm a follower pad before the master loop's loop point. The follower will record for the length of the master loop. Press an active pad to mute its loop. Press again to unmute. Press the loop on off button to stop playback. Press it again to restart playback. Shift plus pad deletes a loop. Shift plus master pad clears all loops. Audio routing in standard mode. By default, the looper samples from the vinyl deck on the same channel. If sample trigger mode is activated on the opposite deck, the looper will automatically switch to sample from that deck's sampler. To return to the vinyl input, press loop in on the sampler deck. To switch back to the sampler input, press loop out. Split mode. To enter split mode, press the loop out button. The top four pads display the top four pads of the sample trigger. The bottom four pads display the top four pads of the live looper. You can record the samples from the top row directly into the bottom row live looper pads, along with any input from the vinyl deck. You can freely move between standard mode and split mode while loops are playing, allowing seamless transitions and layered performance workflows. X10 mode. X10 mode takes over all 16 pads, eight per side, giving you complete creative control across both decks. How to activate. Start in live looper mode, then press shift and hot cue. The pad will begin blinking aqua and magenta. Top row, pads one through four will glow aqua, indicating post fader routing linked to the vinyl deck input. Bottom rows, pads five through eight will glow magenta and are used to capture the sampler output from the opposite deck. To activate the other side, just switch it into live looper mode. Master looping logic. Each side has two potential master pads and four in total. Once a master loop is armed, the remaining master pads are disabled automatically. The other 12 pads become follower pads, ready to record synced loops. Recording in X10 mode. Capturing loops is quick and flexible. You can record the vinyl input or the sampler output from the opposite deck instantly. Start with either and switch just as fast. One, two, three into the boat. One, two, three into the You can boat. also enter platter play and capture melodic loops One, directly two, to the other deck. Three into the boat. One, two, three into the boat. You may have noticed the left deck recorded to the right side looper. By default, deck one is routed to both sides. To switch to deck two, you can use the loop out button. Loop in will change it back to deck one. Master live looper volume is controlled by the mic two level knob defaulted to 12 o'clock.
cross space, activate it with shift plus 45 RPM. The low EQ knobs will turn red to indicate cross space is active. As you move the fader, the bass fades out from one deck and into the other, giving you dynamic low-end control during transitions. The physical low EQ knob still controls the top end of the bass range, meaning you can boost or cut the bass for the fully mixed sound, just like normal. To dial in the amount of low end that cross bass adjusts, play a track with solid low end. Position the cross fader near your cutout point and adjust the cross bass slider to your taste. That wraps up our Scratch Attach demo. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help shape the future of the app, beta testing is available for all Scratch Attach owners and our Patreon supporters. Patreon members also get exclusive discounts, yearly gifts, and more. Check out the links below to join the community and get involved. Scratch Attach.